the only bruiser in Vermintide. He's tanky, but he can't create space like the Foot Knight or the Ironbreaker. But where they have crowd control, the Grail Knight has damage. Tons of damage. If you enjoy one-shotting Chaos Warriors, soloing bosses, being the best elite killer in the game, and crying for help when being shot at, the Grail Knight is for you. In my opinion, he's one of Fat Shark's best designed classes and is a ton of fun for both veterans and new players. So let's get this thing started, and as usual, the first thing up is weapons and combos. And as with all of Kruber's classes, you actually have a lot of options when it comes to your weapons. I would say a very reliable go-to is the Mason Sword and the Executioner Sword, where you use the Mason Sword to kill enemies in general for horde clear and whatnot, and then the Executioner Sword is for bosses and Chaos Warriors. I have talked about the Mason Sword before, go watch my Foot Knight video. Pretty much everything I said there about the Mason Sword applies here as well. With just one little caveat, the best horde clear combo for the Mason Sword is actually a push attack and two lights, not just spamming lights. Although it should be noted that spamming lights, using those first two heavies where he attacks with the mace, will get you a good amount of temp HP if you need it. So it's not like spamming lights is bad on the Mason Sword. Then on the Executioner's Sword, it's probably best to run crit chance and attack speed. You don't have to run block cost reduction on both weapons, just as long as, you know, when you're in a sticky situation, you pull out the weapon with block cost. And this should be swift slang, not opportunist. And using the Executioner Sword is real simple. You pull it out when you're fighting a Chaos Warrior or a boss, and your combo is the first heavy, block cancel. And these heavy attacks actually have the second highest damage to armored enemies in the game. It's only beat out by the Warrior Priest Great Hammer. But you might say that the Executioner's Sword Heavy has a higher DPS because of this extra 20% crit, which is massive. If you crit a Chaos Warrior once, the next hit is going to kill it. You need one crit and one normal heavy hit and the Chaos Warrior will die. This makes the Executioner's Sword probably the best in the game at killing Chaos Warriors and also has really good boss damage too. And that's one way you could build the Grail Knight. But let me go over another one that is probably my favorite way to play him. And that is running the Bretonian Longsword with the Mace and Shield. You guys know I love the Mace and Shield. I talked about it on my Foot Knight video. Again, most of what I said about using the Mace and Shield there applies here as well. But there's one caveat to using the Mace and Shield. If you are running Virtue of the Ideal and you have it fully stacked, you are going to be able to push a Plague Monk out of its push as long as you have Opportunist, no matter what other stats you have on the weapon. So just to show you, I have my Shield and Sword here, which has Power vs. Chaos, Block Cost Reduction, and on my Charm, I don't think I have anything that helps me. No, I have Chaos and armored, both of which a Plague Monk is not. So with this sword and shield, let's stack up our passive. And then spawn a Plague Monk, and then there we go. But you have to have it stacked up. See, now that I don't have it, now I can't stagger him out of it. I'm just using the Mason Shield because I like to perma-stun Chaos Warriors, but if you like the Horde Clear from the Sword and Shield, by all means use it. And anyway, we're really using this for the Shield Bash, and the Shield Bash for both the Sword and Shield and the Mason Shield is pretty much the same. Because the whole purpose of taking the Shield Weapon is to, one, take it out when you're in a really sticky situation and you just need to sit there and block for a second and push things away, and two, to spam the first heavy attack to get a ton of temp HP back, also creating some room for your team. This is where the Grail Knight can kind of play a tank role. While he's not as good at it as the Foot Knight or the Iron Breaker, he has the damage to make up for it. But as far as building the shield weapon goes, you just want to make sure you have block cost reduction. The other stat isn't so much important, you probably want to go attack speed. Power vs Skaven isn't a terrible idea just because you're going to stagger more things, but really the important part is that you have block cost reduction and opportunist, which in turn will allow us on the Bretonian Longsword to not take block cost reduction. Even though I have it, you don't have to take it. You could take crit chance and attack speed along with swift slaying. And there are many, many, many ways you can use the Bretonian Longsword. And let's start to break this down by going over the different moves it has. You have three light attacks. The first two are horizontal attacks, very good horde clear. And then the third one is an overhead. And then it starts over. Very similarly, you have the heavies, which will give you an automatic block as you're charging it. But again, the first two are side sweeps. And the last one is an overhead. But where the magic comes in is mixing these together. And we'll see for Horde Clear, the first light attack is the best attack for this. 13 and a half damage cleave and 12 stagger cleave is, is kind of ridiculously high. So one way you could Horde Clear with the Bretonian Longsword is just spam the first light. And that will certainly get the job done. You could also do just the first two light attacks and then block cancel. 
it is slightly less effective. I mean, very slightly. You notice the, these numbers are fairly different, but it won't make that big of a difference actually in practice. You may kill one or two more Skaven slaves over the course of like three attacks. So this is absolutely an option as well. But then we have a third option, which is just as useful. Light, heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy. With that one, we still get that first light attack in there, and then we get and then we get a slower attack with more damage, and also gives us a window to block if we need to. But we still have one last option, that is the two heavies and a block cancel. This is the slowest option, but has a bit more damage and the most stagger. So then, of course, the question is, which one do I use? And I would say to play around with them and just kind of see which one feels the best to you. A lot of it comes down to personal preference. Of course, the most optimal horde clear one is going to be just doing the first light over and over again. But see, like, I don't really like the rhythm of it. So what I like to do, I like to do the first two lights. That's just the one that feels the best to me. But say you just do not like to do block canceling at all and you like to play more defensively, then you could do the light heavy. Or if you just like to be super defensive, you could just do the heavies. But see, then you have to take into account which of the level 10 talents you take. If you're taking Virtue of Ideal, then you can do whatever. If you're taking Virtue of Heroism, you probably want to use one of them that uses the heavies. Don't worry, we'll talk about those talents. So it's really up to you. You have a judgment call to make here. And maybe you want to use all of them just at different times based on what's happening in front of you. I will say that I have noticed personally that my damage goes way up when I'm using the first two light attacks for Horde Clear than when I'm using one of the heavy combos. But again, damage isn't all that matters in this game. If you like to sit here and do these heavies, play really safe and never take any damage, you're probably better off than I am doing more damage. So then let's talk about armored enemies. If you want to do the most DPS, your combo is push attack, heavy, light, heavy, light, heavy. That push attack is just to get you into that heavy light chain. This will do the most DPS to armored enemies and bosses. But now, say you have a bunch of storm vermin in front of you, you don't necessarily want to use that combo because you won't be staggering anything else other than what you're hitting. In that case, you can just use the first two heavies. And let me show you how the stagger on that works real quick. So, you'll, not you'll notice that the first armored enemy will take damage, the second will not, but it will be staggered, and then if this third enemy is not armored, it will take damage and get staggered. So that way, you'll actually be staggering more enemies instead of just hitting one enemy. So again, you have a judgment call to make here when you're facing armored enemies. This is why I love the Bretonian Longsword. You have at least two different combos you could be doing at any time. You have to think on your feet to get the most value out of this weapon. Fantastically designed weapon. I wish every weapon in the game was like this. So those are all the melee weapons I want to talk about. I've given you two different combos. You can mix match those if you want to. And I would encourage you to try other ones as well. Like you could do something goofy like running the greatsword for horde clear and then the executioner for killing armored enemies. It's kind of a good idea. I want to try that. And I promise I will talk about the Great Hammer probably when I make a video on the Mercenary. And real quick, I want to go over the accessories. I don't go over the necklace and trinket very much because it's pretty much the same for every class. On the trinket, you want health, block cost reduction, and bark skin. This is just going to make you as tanky as you can possibly be. And on the trinket, you almost always want crit chance and stamina recovery. Because of swift slaying, you want to take every chance you can to get crit chance. And of course, stamina is one of the most important stats in the game. And on most classes, as in classes that are not the ranger veteran or outcast engineer, you want to take shrapnel on your trinket. This is going to make killing bosses much easier. And for the charm, there's not any key breakpoints we're trying to hit, so I just default to attack speed and power versus Skaven. And since we are a boss killing class, we get a lot of value out of potions, which means we want potions to last longer on us, thus we take decanter. So now let's talk about talents. Taking temp HP when you stagger an enemy is always going to be reliable, but on Grail Knight you can absolutely get away with using Lady's Wrath because of Knight's challenge. You're probably going to be killing at least one enemy, probably more with every swing of your weapon. But I like to take Lady's Generosity mainly so I can take out the shield and basically get all my HP back during a horde. And you have another judgment call to make at the level 10 talent. Virtue of Ideal will give you 10% power for for each enemy you kill stacking up to three times so it gives you 30 percent bonus power as long as you're killing things and then virtue of heroism will just give your heavy attacks a bonus 25 percent power just a flat number so you might be inclined to think that virtue of ideal is just better in all cases but I would like to argue otherwise. If you were making a build that is centered around killing bosses, having really high 
single target damage. You got to think about the situations where you're doing this. How often are you fighting a boss when there are other enemies around for you to kill? How often are you killing other enemies while you're hitting a boss? In my experience, because of the way enemy priority works and generally the way the AI director works, a lot of the time when you're fighting a boss, you are just fighting a boss, which means that you likely won't have virtue of ideal stacked when you're fighting it. There are exceptions to this, of course, but in a case where there's nothing else around the boss for you to kill, then Virtue of Heroism is going to be much better for you as you're going to have that bonus 25% to your damage. So again, there's a judgment call to make here. If you're not really going for a boss killing build, then you would probably just want to go Virtue of Ideal. And this is the one that I generally like to run. But don't sleep on Virtue of Heroism. And Virtue of Nightly Temper actually allows you to one-shot body shot a Chaos Warrior on a crit which is pretty hilarious. But like I said before, it only takes one more hit after you crit a Chaos Warrior to kill them anyway. This is with the Executioner's Sword, of course. I would say the value from these two talents is a lot more than this one. But hey, if you want to one-shot a Chaos Warrior, <laughs> why not? For level 15, Smiter is our best option. We are elite killers. Smiter is good for that. I would only use Bulwark if you plan on only using a shield. I wouldn't do that, but I'm not going to tell you how to play the game. For the level 20 talent, these are pretty much all good. It just kind of depends on how much of the RNG you want to deal with. From the quest, you can get 10% power, 5% attack speed, 10% cooldown reduction, 10% damage reduction, and health regen. These are all pretty useful stats, but having to go find a tome or find a grim for these can be very annoying. If you're playing on Kata, people don't generally like to go find the books, and I in general hate interacting with the books in the game. I tend to take Virtue of Penitent just because there's a slightly less likely chance that I'll have to go find a book. But like I said, all of these are good, and deciding which is better between the two of these just comes down to crunching numbers, and there's a lot of RNG involved on which quest you're going to get. So I like the default to Virtue of the Penitent. And if you take Virtue of Penitent, by the way, you need to be chugging these strength potions. If you're playing on Cataclysm, you're going to be getting a lot of them. So, so if there's a horde, if there's a bunch of elites, if there's a boss, you start chugging these strength potions. For the level 25 talents, again, these are all kind of good in their own right. I like to take Virtue of Stoicism because it makes the Grail Knight very tanky. If you're one of the chads who like to take Repost on Witch Hunter Captain, then Virtue of Discipline is absolutely for you. If you're using the Mason Sword or you just like to spam your push attack a lot, Virtue of the Joust is absolutely good as well. But if you're not sure which one to take, I would say Virtue of Stoicism is a nice default because you could always use more tankiness. And there are two good options for the level 30 talents. Virtue of Audacity lets you delete bosses, and Virtue of Confidence lets you clear whores and clear patrols. You can cleave through four full health storm vermin with Virtue of Confidence. You can still one-shot a Chaos Warrior as long as the first enemy you hit. Virtue of Audacity does not really cleave, so you can kill two things basically, all the way up to Chaos Warriors, and, will, and of course does the most damage to bosses. So it's up to you, do you want to be a boss killer or do you want to clear out groups of hordes, elites, and whatnot. I generally like to take Virtue of Confidence, that's just how I like to play. So there's really two builds you could go for. If you wanted to be a boss killer, you could take Virtue of Heroism, Discipline, and Audacity. But if you wanted to be more of a tank slash bruiser, you could take Virtue of Ideal, Stoicism, and Confidence. This is the build that I generally like to play, but again, one is not really better than the other. Each has its use. And that does it for the talents, so now let's talk about strategy. And since we are a boss killer, we need to talk about our boss killing combo. The best way I've found of killing a boss super fast is to one, have it backed up against a wall. It's going to be much easier to hit your ult if it's backed up against a wall. You start by throwing a bomb, this will apply shrapnel, then you immediately use your ult, ideally hitting a headshot, then you pop your concentration potion, try to get a time to block Lock off if you can, use your ult again, that should stagger it so you can hit it with a heavy attack, and you back off, maybe try to get a time block or just dodge. You have a whole six seconds on Virtue of Discipline. From there on, you are just using your ult when you can and dash dancing with the boss. And so now we finally talk about dash dancing. If you've ever seen someone in your game solo a boss and not take any damage and you didn't know how, this is how. Mainly for the Rat Ogre, the Rat Ogre is the easiest to solo. You can do this the Chaos Spawn as well. The Storm Fiend is super easy anyway, so who cares? And the Minotaur is its own whole beast. And the way dash dancing works is when you are really close to a boss, the boss will do an attack where it stands still and attacks right and directly in front of it. You want to trigger this attack while moving in with a heavy. And I mean, you want to feel your movement stop from colliding with the monster's model. Once you feel that collision, it should trigger the attack. At that point, you dash back and start charging your next heavy attack. And then you just rinse and repeat this. There is a rhythm to it. You have to practice it. 
And really, you just want to make sure you don't dodge back too fast. If you dodge back too fast, it will trigger this charging attack that the monster does, at which point the whole rhythm is messed up and you're going to have to get the boss back into that rhythm. You can do so by basically holding block and walking straight up to the monster. <laughs> but using a combination of dash dancing, the bomb and concentration potion combo, you will be able to delete bosses without taking any damage. If you aren't able to do this at the beginning, don't worry, it takes practice. But generally, once you figure out the rhythm of it, you'll have it down. Okay, so now that you are dash dancing bosses and you're taking them out relatively easily, there are some other things we need to talk about. And first is what your role is in a team comp. And really that's defined by your main limitation as a class, and that's that you have no ranged weapon. So you are incapable of special sniping. The good news is, is that you are very good at pretty much everything else other than support. So you can kind of play this role as a tank, where you are always in the horde's face, you are always taking elites head on, you are always killing anything that's in melee range, and you make space where you can. The only reason you're not really considered a tank is because you can't create space as well as a foot knight or an iron breaker. But as I've said before, you have the damage to make up for that. So, so put very simply, your role on the team is to just kill things, anything that's in front of you. You definitely do not want to be stingy with your ult. It is a fairly low cooldown and it will come back pretty fast if you're fighting a horde. I would not hesitate to throw it out once you start seeing some elites in a horde. And on the last video I made, Chatter's company commented that he is getting hit a lot and he doesn't have as high as damage as people say he should, which is a great vehicle for me to talk about this strategy with the Grail Knight. The first thing I will say is don't rely too much on how much damage you're doing. Don't put too much emphasis on that damage number. You're, you're tempted to because, again, your whole purpose as a class is to just kill everything in front of you, but let's not forget the goal of a mission in Vermintide 2 is to get to the end of the mission. It's not to get the highest damage or get the most kills, it is to complete the mission. That being said, if you want to be doing more damage, there's a few things we need to talk about. First is, do you have your build right? Having crit chance and swift sling is really, really important for doing damage in this game. And if you're going into a cataclysm lobby, you should at least have an orange weapon with the right stats. And then I would ask, have you tried all the melee weapons I've mentioned in this video? Some people really do not like the Bretonian longsword. If that's the case, then I would highly recommend using the mason sword. If you have a weapon you like and you're using the right combos, then your problem is probably not in this area. Which brings me to the the part about getting hit a lot. Because Grail Knight is the kill everything class, we're very tempted to just try to dish out as much damage as we possibly can without thinking about other things. And trust me when I say it is much better to be more calculated with how you attack and not be greedy. Being greedy with your attacks will get you killed on the Grail Knight. I'll try to find some examples of me being greedy and paying for it on screen. So if you're if you're getting overwhelmed, don't be afraid to sit back, hold block, and just do some pushes. Make sure you are dodging every second or so so. And no matter how much you want to throw that big heavy attack at the Chaos Warrior in the middle of a bunch of Skaven Slaves, don't do it. Because the second you throw out that heavy and it hits the Chaos Warrior, you're going to get hit by 10 different rats. So if you're having this problem like Chatter's company is, I would advise you to first start with getting that damage taken number down. Don't even worry about your damage done. Play more defensive, figure out why you're getting hit so much, and then go from there. Not doing as much damage as you should isn't as big of a deal as getting hit too much is. So yeah, work on your defense, then start working on your offense, because you will always do more damage if you are alive. And make sure you are always playing with your team. I know everyone says this, but let me explain more specifically what we mean when we say this when you are fighting a horde in melee. Hopefully you also have one teammate who is engaged with that horde in melee range. You want to play right next to them and overlap your DPS with theirs. This means that more enemies are going to be staggered at any given moment, as opposed to you two playing separate from each other, which means they will have less chances to attack you, which means you will take less damage, thus making you do more damage. When you see these teams playing together and it looks like they're not even trying, it's because they really aren't. They're just overlapping their DPS with each other so they have literally no chance of being attacked. And I think that's a good place to wrap up the strategy for the Grail Knight. Put simply, you just kill things without taking damage, which of course is much easier said than done. I appreciate all of the comments you guys leave on the videos, and I love that usually the top rated comment is one that's proving me wrong on something, and I love that the comment section is a place where people can kind of have a discourse over tiny little details over something in a video game. So please, if I said anything wrong in this video, let me know. We're all here to just learn about the game. I appreciate you guys spending your time watching, listening to me talk about Vermintide, and I will see you on the next one.